Hey, what's up, Lucy? Hi, thank you so much for taking time to talk to me today. I appreciate it. How are you? I'm great. Thank you for taking time to call in. What's up? So, um, I started a relationship with someone. I do happen to work with them. And it was over the course of a year. And things progressed. um, Even got to the point where we wanted to move in together and signed a lease and... I knew this person was married, but it was explained (laughs) to me that they were (laughs) separated. I didn't understand that it was capital M married. Lucy, you have Um, to lead with that. Yes. Lead with that. You did such a good job bearing the lead. (laughs) So I I did know that, but I, I was under the understanding that they were separated and beginning the process of divorce, which... You know, hindsight's twenty twenty. I realized that divorce should come first before anything else. No way. Um, No way. (laughs) So, I mean, yeah, I I didn't understand the situation at the time and was just kind of rolling with it. And um, Okay, but you understand it now, though, right? Yes, of course. Okay, so this guy sucks, and he's he's untrustworthy, (laughs) and he's cheated on one, he'll cheat on you, and so we're moving on, right? Yeah, I guess that's... That's the the question is is how to move on. So, you know, he still talks to me. He still says that he has the same feelings and wants the same thing. Why does he, he have any contact with you? We work together, so we're yeah, around each other. I've been in some pretty cold work relationships. I work with Kelly. I've been in some pretty cold <laughs> like work relationships. Um, yeah. You it's still hard want not to hold. You still want it to happen in your though. life. Do it's I, hard to let go of. I'm not going to lie. No, it's super hard. But you still want it to happen. In my perfect dream world, yes, I understand that perfect dream worlds don't exist. I love a good story, I guess. Yeah. Um, and it's hard when someone's still saying all these things to you, not to hold space in your life for them. And I'm afraid that. I'll pass up on good things because in the back of my head, there's no good here. There's no good here. Yeah. Can I tell you an alternative um, hypothesis? Yes. I think you are upset slash confused as to who you've become. And it's easy to connect to. I have a close buddy who had an affair was such a left turn for him in a million Mm -hmm. years would never be that guy. And mm-hmm. instantly wrapped up in that relationship to try to make that work because that was the only path to um, redemption in his in his mind. Mm-hmm. I have a friend who's a woman who just completely poured her soul out to somebody. Like it, it happens all the time. Where I can't believe I've become this. Like in your, yes. you never set out to be somebody who would be the other woman who would date a married man, no. fall in love with him, sign a lease with him. And then there's this picture in your mind when you look in the mirror of, oh, you're a kind of woman who does that. Yeah. And so now you have a vested interest in somehow making this thing work with this guy to almost to, to wrap your, to build a wall around the collateral damage here. I'm going to tell you, I w- the lack of character of this man is so powerful because it's not like he had a workplace crush. It's not like he got in over his head. It's not like he had a, a one-time affair. He yeah. he took someone along his fantasy ride. He used you so badly. And by the way, you used him after you found out. Because he becomes a, a way to get fully emotionally invested without ever crossing a line. Right? Because you know he's anchored at home. The whole thing, there is zero good that can come from this. That's a, fair, a very fair, fair assessment. Um, yeah, I... I don't know how to break that connection in my brain. I don't know. You have to cut it off. It's, it's like it's like drink. stopping drinking. You can't just keep going to the same bar. Right. You can't have alcohol in your house. I've got friends who've been in recovery for 20 years, and they can be around it all day long. That doesn't bother them at all. But that first that first couple of years, it's, it's scorched earth. I can't be around the same people. I can't go to the same places. Um, and, and at some level, you have to get some some... Um, some uh, it, whether you have to manufacture it or you have to just let it go, I can't believe you're not enraged 
that what a lying sack <laughs> I, of crap this that guy is. is. What I, that is what I hear a lot is people are like, I can't believe you don't hate him. And I don't. No, it's not I hate. Don't. It's rage. Like hate's kind of a waste of time. I'm, I'm talking about like, like a guy that would sign a lease with you. Yeah. Take it that far. Yeah. Yeah. That's disgusting to me. And I didn't find everything out until after the fact because... Can I tell you something? The, you, you still don't know everything. Because I yeah. promise you he tells his wife something different than he's telling you. Oh, I would bet my life on it. Promise. Would that, bet my that life I don't, on it. I don't talk to that woman at work. She's kind of crazy. She follows me around everywhere. She always is texting. Um, all I want to do is be with you. We built this life together. This I, I work with a crazy person, but I can't get a new job right now. You're the yeah. other story. But you can't control that other story. You can't control what a spineless lying coward he is. You can't control what kind of spineless lying coward you are. Stop. Just stop. I think, I think the picture I was painted and the story I was originally sold, like it's hard to attach those words to that person, but I have to like That's right. realize that that person doesn't exist. Ah, there you go. You created somebody in the world and you backfilled it with that dude. Yeah. Yeah. A hundred percent. But you 100%. also haven't done the hard work to backfill reality with you. You're a woman who's continuing to be attached to a married man. Yeah. Yeah. And I think you're worth more than that. I think you're better than that. Does that make sense? Yeah. Thank you for saying that. Do you? I I uh, definitely struggle on the self-worth front, which is why I think I accept the treatment that I do and accept the situations that I'm admittedly and take full responsibility got myself into. Yeah, but I can hear you. Um, I can hear you uh, gulping it down. I want you to, to stop. I want you to feel it because you're really good at passing over how much all this hurts. Is that fair? It's sitting right there at the top, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it hurts. It hurts a lot. Mm -hmm. It hurts that you were lied I, to um, and it hurts that you found yourself having acted like this person. Yeah, a hundred percent. And I don't like easily feel that way about people or, you know, commitment is definitely something I struggle with. So I just, I worked on that for the wrong person, the wrong situation, the wrong everything. Well, here's another, here's an, an, a, a second alternative hypothesis. He was the safest person for somebody to get involved with who is commitment phobic. Because you can go yeah. all in and imagine this life and way deep down you know it's not going to come true because he's got a wife. Self-sabotage had its finest. <laughs> well, and you have probably have a history of dating people who have built in, like, <laughs> have shown their true colors already as you're getting to know them or as you become involved with them and they leave you and this guy will find somebody to cheat on you with and leave you. And it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. And you'll say, see, I told you, Lucy. Fair. Very fair. Very accurate. And so you have, to, accurate. you have to decide you're worth somebody be, being somebody's only one. Which means you have to risk getting hurt. And by the way, like just from a data perspective, <laughs> you've proven it to yourself. Like that your way gets you hurt too. Yeah. So it does. It does. You can't fix anything that has happened up until this point, but you can do the next right thing. And just completely cut contact. And it's that's definitely going to be a challenge because before anything turned into anything, this person. It started out as friendship, which I'm sure you've heard a million, million times over. And it, I didn't, I didn't mean for it. It sounds stupid. I didn't mean for it to get this far, but of course not. Nobody does, man. That's that's why I. That's why I'm not screaming at you. And if the roles were reversed <laughs> and he was on the phone, I, I'd be mad at him because he's married. Um, but nobody, nobody plans for it to get like this. I get that. 
But yeah. somebody has to call it at some point and not continue the fantasy train right off a cliff. Um, and by the way, you can't, I don't think you can make this switch long term that doesn't come from a place that you believe in your bones that you're worth more than this. Yeah. Because if you don't, you're going to break up with them because you're pissed or you're angry or like some indignant like, yeah. <laughs> and that kind of like when there's like a great painter or musician and you walk up to him, you're like, I need you to know you changed my life. That's amazing. Yeah. But that doesn't pay the light bill, right? Like it'd be cool if right. you bought a record or a ticket. Similarly, you can break up with somebody because you're enraged. That doesn't make the 2 a.m. loneliness go away. Right. Right. And you have to decide I'm worth it. It doesn't that doesn't make the loneliness go away per se, but it does it, it backfilled with a sense of virtue and character and worth. You're just worth more than this, man. Thank you for saying that, because I don't always feel like it. I know you don't. I know you don't. I go, I go to therapy. I work on it, but I know, but you I'm don't. Like trying what, to, what does your therapist say? What has your therapist <laughs> said about all of this? Um, that I don't know. It was a cruel thing to do to someone. Um, I didn't find out about everything until after a lease was signed. We were making lease payments. It was like when he was supposed to move in that things got weird. And that's when I was like, something's not right. So I went to his house and that's how I kind of found everything out. <laughs> Did his wife the answer the door? door? Yeah. Oh, for real? Yes, I was kind of joking. Like, she was like, who are you? And I was like, I, I, I think we need to talk about some things because I don't think I understand what's going on. And I don't think you know what's going on. God, Lucy, lead with that next time. That's awesome. <laughs> That's great radio. All right, so did y'all get in a fist fight out in the parking lot? What happened? No, she was so oddly calm about it. Because you're not um, the first one. All right, so. No, I wasn't. And he told me that, you know, obviously, uh, I, like I said, I thought they were separated. And he was like, I, I've never stepped out on my marriage, like, blah, blah, blah. Um, and she was like, obviously <laughs> by my reaction, you can tell that this has happened before. It's never gone this far, but it's happened before. And, um, that's not even the end of the saga. So that all happened. And he's like, well, everything's out in the open now. So I can actually leave. He ends up bringing a bag to the house that we signed for. And then tells me it's over. They're getting divorced, whatever. And then he leaves. And I have to go back and be like, she sent people to my house to look for him. And I was like, but what the hell is going on? Like, I, I can't believe anything that's being said. And so her and I <laughs> confronted him together. Oh, and, God, uh, I wish you would have had that on record. That would have been awesome. I, I did record it. Oh, did I don't you? think anyone knows that, but my phone was on in my pocket. Um, just for my own. Did his sake, other girlfriends come too, or is it just y'all two? <laughs> just us. Awesome. Just us. I don't. I don't know the other two exactly. that I that y'all know of. But here's the deal. Here's uh, well, the deal. Here's the deal. My yeah. Wait, right now, I want you to take out your phone. I don't okay. want you to delete his contact. Okay. Do it like right now. Okay. Put me Let on me speaker and then do it. All right, it's gone. It's gone. It's gone. The moment this call is up, over, I want you to send him an email on your work email. Okay. That says, I'm cutting off contact with you. I don't want to talk to you electronically. I don't want you to call me. I don't want you to text me. I don't want you to email me anymore. If you do, I will consider it harassment and a violation of our professional working relationship. Send. I like that. You're so <laughs> Okay. Is that fair? I wish I had you on tap all the time. You don't trust me. I'm a mess. But right now I'm doing all right. <laughs> but hold on. You're then gonna have to you're gonna be empty. Yeah. And you're gonna have to backfill that with friendships. You're gonna have to backfill that with other people that you call. 
And you're going to have to deal with the hollowness that you feel because you became somebody that you don't respect. No, I don't and at I'm, all. I'm telling you from the outside, you're worthy of that respect, but you got to, you, you got to act different. You got to be someone who doesn't date married men. Yeah. My first and last, I swear. Okay. We're done. <laughs> We're done. We learned a lot. Unfortunately, the hard way, but that's how I seem to do we things. We did. You did. And by the way, going back to the friendship stuff, you lost the, him as like a friend just for whatever it's worth. Like my non, <laughs> I was about to say my non-sexual friends. That's, that's all but one. My, my friends who are not like, there's no romantic interest or whatever. I don't hang out with people. I hang out with guys that are questionable on a lot of fronts. I love them, but they're, man, they make different choices than me. But I don't hang out with dudes who cheat on their wives. I just don't. Like, I just don't. I hang out with people who make mistakes, and I hang out with people who say they're sorry, and I hang out with people who, any number of different values than me, different beliefs than me. But forget the romantic part. Don't be around this dude because he's the kind of scumbag that cheats on his wife. He's the kind of scumbag that continually over and over destroys the humans in his life. I just not going to be around that kind of person. I'll walk with them if they say they want to get better. They want to change their life. But it's just as a, as a rule of life, man, there's, life is too short. And there's too many amazing people out there trying to do the next right thing. Today's your uh, Independence Day, my friend Lucy. Today's your day of freedom. And today's the day you've got to deal with a lot of hard stuff, including the things that you've done and, you've and the person that you were becoming. But we're going to become something different starting today. Hang on the line. I'm going to send you a copy of Building a Non-Anxious Life. That's going to be my gift to you. But if you call him or you respond to a text message or if he emails you and you don't send it on to HR, um, you have to send the book back. You won't, but that's my rule. Thanks for the call, Lucy. We're rooting for you. 